glad you could join us this morning. I hope you enjoyed the beautiful weather yesterday. It makes today's rain seem a little more refreshing rather than depressing. So today we continue our exploration of Jesus's parables that are recorded in Luke's gospel. So let's dig into Luke, the 18th chapter. Then Jesus told them a parable about their need to pray always and not losing heart. He said, in a certain city, there was a judge who neither feared God nor had respect for people. In that city, there was a widow who kept coming to him and saying, grant me justice against my opponent. For a while he refused, but later he said to himself, though I have no fear of God and no respect for anyone, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will grant her justice so that she may not wear me out by continually coming. And the Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God grant justice to his chosen ones who cry to him day and night? Will he delay long in helping them? I tell you, he will quickly grant justice to them. And yet when the son of man comes, will he find faith on earth? The word of the Lord. When Jesus told this story, all women and widows to an even higher degree were incredibly vulnerable. They were unable to own property or have a job, which left them completely dependent on their male relatives for survival. It is in this state of vulnerability that the unnamed widow begs, nay, demands justice. Someone continues to take advantage of her, and she needs help. She has no power or social capital to do this on her own, so she continues to approach the judge to deliver this justice. This seems like a reasonable solution, but we hear that the judge neither fears God nor has respect for any people. Before we sympathize for a judge that has been unduly criticized, a few verses later we hear him talking to himself. He says, though I have no fear of God and no respect for anyone, it's not a harsh judgment, but rather an accurate assessment of his character. I no longer wonder why he's talking to himself. No one else wants to talk to him. It is from her discarded and ignored position in society that the widow continues to bring her case, her hurt, her pain, her vulnerability, her desperation, her powerlessness, her indignation. She brings this all to the judge. In the words of scholar Barbara Lundblad, she is utterly alone and without a chance, yet she has the audacity to think that mercy would come to her. And it does. While it is tempting to quickly jump into the meat of this compelling and challenging story, it might be helpful to remember the setting. Verse 1, Jesus told them a parable about their need to pray always and not to lose heart. So what does this story about a widow demanding justice tell us about prayer? There's a direct connection between this parable and an earlier conversation Jesus had with his disciples. Right after he taught them what we now call the Lord's Prayer, Jesus asked, Is there anyone among you who, if your child asks for a fish, will he give a snake instead of a fish? Or if the child asks for an egg, will give a scorpion? If you then who are evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask it? So humans make all sorts of mistakes and create all sorts of problems in the world, but they still know how to love their kids beyond measure, and they will go to extreme lengths to take care of and provide for them. If humans are able to do this for those whom they love, God will obviously do this and more, which directly connects to today's parable. Yes, the judge is someone we should not strive to emulate. Yes, his motivations are all wrong, but justice is still brought forth. So if the judge is able to do what is right for the woman, will not God grant justice to his chosen ones who cry to him day and night? Will he delay long in helping them? We are invited to continually approach God with our case. Jesus invites us to bring our hurt, our pain, vulnerability, desperation, powerlessness, and indignation to God. Cry out to God day and night and beg that God does not delay in helping us. There is a sacredness to recognizing what is happening both near us and all around us in the world and confronting God about it and saying, I thought you wanted more for us, God. But we're also challenged to see those in our midst who are vulnerable, who are begging us for help and consider the ways in which we might be getting in the way of their justice being served. 
In the words of David Lowe's, God, the Bible has persistently insisted, gives special attention to those who are most vulnerable. Therefore, we should persist in our complaints, even to the point of embarrassing the powers that be in order to induce change. How could we amplify the voices of today's widows, the people who have no power or social capital to help their needs be met? That would be answered prayer indeed. Thanks be to God. So a few discussion or reflection questions for you. First, in what ways do you feel like the widow or have you felt like the widow, powerless and vulnerable? And who was the judge who helped you receive justice? Number two, in what ways do you feel like the judge, possibly getting in the way of justice? Who are the widows who are asking for your help? Third, how does the idea of confronting God with the demand for justice, how does that idea feel? Does it feel empowering or rude, inconsiderate or liberating? And last, how could our prayers on behalf of others, how could our prayers shape or influence how we act in the world? So let me know what you think. And if you're feeling particularly brave, you can email me your prayer concerns and I'll pray for you. Or you can post a comment here on this uh, video and I will invite the rest of the community to join me in that prayer for you. So let us close in prayer. God of love and justice, thank you for promising to always hear our cries day or night. Give us the perseverance to never stop seeking what is right and give us the wisdom to recognize when we may be a hindrance to others and then show us how we may support them in their vulnerability. Wrap your care around the hurt, your hope around the desperate, your courage around the powerless, and your determination around the indignant. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thanks for joining me today, church. I hope you're doing well and staying safe, and I hope you have a great week. Take care.